March 7th uh, select board meeting. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Where is the flag? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America the Republic for which it stands, one nation uh, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. It was kind of like trying to harmonize for me there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> hey, Trisha, do you want to come up front? You're first on our agenda. Welcome. Have you been here with all this technology? No. No. <laughs> you get to see yourself right up close and personal, right behind you there. That's okay. <laughs> Trisha, you're so nice to share. <laughs> Are we good? Are we? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So you guys are here for two reasons, right? Two reasons. First is to talk about to reappoint Vinny back onto the board, which you come very highly regarded from your your peers, Vinny. Both Trisha and um, Kelly have spoken very highly of you uh, over the last couple of weeks. So, um, in terms of process, Hillary, mm -hmm. I have a motion. Okay. So um, the first thing that we need to do, we need to take two votes tonight um, in regards to Vinny. The first one, three, sorry. The first one is to designate the Board of Health as a special And then do all the, okay. So I make a motion to appoint Vincent Fort. 40. 40. 40. 40. I always want to say 410. <laughs> to the Board of Health. Three, three year term. I have a first from Mrs. Grant. Second. Second from Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Opposed? What? Abstain. You're abstaining. Okay. Is there further discussion? I think you already got the ears. Okay. We got them. So, all right. So, so three, three, one abstention. Okay. Congratulations, Vinny. So the next vote we need to take is designating the Board of Health as. Do you want to explain further? I don't know if you want to explain what's going on. The special municipal. Do you want an explanation on? Do you want me to just describe what what the request is? Yes. Yeah, <coughs> and then I'll make the but, two motions. But sure, for the for the public's purpose. Yeah. Yes. I, and I, I don't know if you want to explain it, Tricia. I mean, your board really is the ones that are presenting what it is that you're requesting of. So basically, it, Vinny always um, helps out when the health agent isn't available. Um, he's been doing that for 26 years, and we just feel that he should be compensated for that when he, you know, when our health agent is gone for a week or a couple days or whatever it is. Um, I mean, he just. As soon as he's needed, he just goes. You know, we do have a, we did vote in a couple other people that um, we can use when Bruce is on vacation, but one of them, seven has, towns. He, he helps out seven towns. Right. Um, and another one doesn't live locally. So if we need someone urgently, it's good to have him as another person. And that person can use, it's only for plan reviews. Because if I review a plan versus if Bruce were using a plan, the three board members can vote on. If I review a plan, I've got to abstain because I review the plan. Right. The okay. And I can't approve <clears throat> my own, let's say, plan review. You know. That so makes sense. We'll use the guy out of milk for plan reviews. And the only other time we use Mr. Donatelli would be like for perk tests right now if they're an emergency because I don't have them current with my soil evaluation license. And it's not worth getting it. It's, 15 hours or 12 hours of credits that you have to do every two years, and it's a 300 dollars thing, which the town would pay, but I just don't feel like going for it. I had it for a year. So it's just another time. If I, yeah. if I could just ask, ask one yeah. question. Is this specifically for inspections as they relate to Title V? 
that most you of really it is that, but it's also minimum housing things which are critical. So yeah, would you be compensated? How would you compensate for those things? I thought we were just talking about uh, inspections as they relate to right. a septic system install or, or review. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Right. We'll just yeah. 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 That's what we're right. referring to. Yeah. Okay. Because those are things <clears> that you have fees associated with. Correct. Or that you pay mm -hmm. others to do. You don't. Correct. The only one that does minimum housing standards would be would be uh, the healthy. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. So this would be as it relates to Title Five inspections. Okay. Is that is so that the I'm asking? I don't know if yeah. that's if that's the only thing. Um, as far as compensation goes, yeah, that's all we're talking about. Because yeah. if he's covering for Bruce and he has to, you know, spend a whole week of going to homes like he did for um, the Charles, Charles and, and you know, take care of that stuff. I mean, he should be compensated for it, just like another health agent would be compensated. Yeah, but you, I, I just you don't know part that, of our no I just don't know that you have a fee structure for that you know what what does someone from another town or an assistant that comes to do those things get compensated so we do have that right now right. yeah I think they're basically whatever the inspections are obviously if it was tr trash a little it would be something small or I think but, it's hourly. I think yeah. we did like twenty-five dollars an hour or something if it was trash stuff. Why is it listed as fifty dollars an hour? Okay. Yeah, it was fifty for I think the septic inspections, and then I thought other things were twenty-five. That's not correct. I'm just reading off the application. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, not paying specific. Where are you seeing that, Michael? The, the bottom of the page. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Yeah. What is your financial interest in the municipal contract? Fifty dollars now, or fifty-two dollars now, fifty dollars. Because that's what it, that's what a uh, bottom inspection for a, a septic system is, right? Or, yeah. Basically, yeah. you know, I mean, um, obviously, when the agent does it, it's based on his salary and his duties. For, you know. But I mean, if we call somebody from in oh yeah, it would be fifty. Yeah. yeah. Away, it's fifty dollars. Same price. Yeah. That's yeah. what we yeah. made. Or, uh, recommendation that we would hire two other people to come in and do things and it, it didn't work the first let's say week or two after we already made that motion I said okay that's it you know, you know the, the office called and said we're yeah, not available so we're, you know with the septic bottom you can't go any further and then if it's the whole reaching for the, the tank is tight tank that's three hundred dollars a pop every five days so a septic system should be able to get in Quickly within five days. Completely. And we'll say two months ago, I had a septic system being done. Bruce was away, and if he hadn't come down to inspect it, I would have been pushed back a week. So I, I definitely understand and the, the other need thing to have someone to do this it. This time of year, yeah. let's say back it off when yours was done and a few others. If the ground freezes on the bottom and you put the stuff on it, that system's going to probably fail. The other thing that happens is if you're backfilling it, nothing sits right. So the air between the sand. And gravel to simply keys the material so you get all these voids and the system collapses. Yeah, but so, so seriously, that's a 20, 30, to, yeah, yeah, dollar yeah, system okay. destroyed because it wasn't inspected. And I don't use the rule 48 hours, it's inspected as soon as it's called. It. And why don't we have reciprocity agreements with other towns? Doesn't Bruce? It, cover in, in no way that's typically the way it would work is and they do have backups that that uh, are paid the, the days of uh unless it was an emergency if there was if there was a crisis and we called another community um uh, they'd send somebody over right. but for routine vacations or something like that you're expected to be able to to provide for your own community i mean we, we have a similar situation with the electrical inspector we have someone that would back up and get paid but if there was a crisis you're right no, but understanding that we have a multitude of other plumbing and electrical. Why haven't we over time had this? We, we do have uh, two individuals that are on call, but uh, I guess the issue is they're not readily available. Yes, I mean, not, right. If they're, not, if they're not available, then we have some right in our town. Yeah. It seems to have more time to be able to address the issues. Kelly, any questions? I'm going to understand my wife. All right, Don, any questions? Okay. All right. So, Hillary, mm -hmm. now, <laughs> I 
like making a motion to designate the Board of Health as a special municipal employer. Employee. A special municipal employee. Making so a motion. I made a motion. That is your motion. That is my motion. Do I have a second? I will second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 I, I, uh, but I have some questions. So, so my, my question is, I, I, I apologize to the audience and to everyone, but I feel like I'm coming in halfway through a conversation here. And I know I'm not there, but I, the way it started, I wasn't sure what was going on. And I can't imagine other res people on this side. So could somebody just kind of be, give me a high level overview of what we're doing here because i really feel like part of the board knew what was going on coming into the meeting and i have no idea it's, it's in all the documents yeah, yeah. i know i am sorry I, I was out today so dennis yeah no i mean you, you'd have to read those documents really to, to, to okay all right understand no problem of, of the legal <clears throat> all right no, well we'll just move on do you need do you want to ask some questions to clarify? No, no, or? I just I'm not I'm not prepared, obviously. So I'm not going to ask ask any more questions. I don't want to hold up the meeting. Okay. All right. So we have a three yes or a one an abstention. Is there a third thing we're talking about? Yes. Okay. So now I am making a motion to approve Vinny as the oh, board of health member who was able to acquire this contract as a special municipal employee. As a, uh, acting as the health agent. Acting as the health agent. All right. We, and be compensated for this contract. And be compensated for this contract. Thank you, Lori. You're welcome. I have a motion to put up first. Yes. It's okay. So I have a first for Mrs. Grant. Do I have a second? I will second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Abstentions. That's three. Um, three yeas, one abstention. Okay. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for your Welcome time. back, yeah. Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Michael Hennessy. Michael? Hello, Michael. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. So we have your application here to apply for the Board of Health. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the position? Uh, my, my background is EMS. I have 13 years experience in emergency medical services. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a kitchen and went to Valley Tech for culinary. So I know what to look for in a kitchen. What to look for in a kitchen. <laughs> and I want to help the community. I've been a resident here for about six years and I uh, just want to get involved. Okay. And you're also the director of veteran services? Yeah, not here. Not no, here. For, for which district? Marlboro Center. Marlboro Center. Awesome. Nice. That won't have any bearing on my, my position. Yeah, no, I just actually, I thought it was a great thing that I read yes, on no, your application. It, it, so I, I <clears throat> wanted to applaud you for that. Yeah, you know, I just had to go through the ethics commission just to make sure that when yeah. it came up with the right. Michael actually has been uh, tutoring and working with our veterans agent, who's been spending a lot of time coming down and been doing that for months, so we certainly appreciate that. Definitely. We appreciate your interest in the position because we often have a lot of people coming forward. Um, any other questions from my colleagues? I think it's exceptional. It's, what he brings to the table is perfect. Great. John, anything from you? No, I think it's great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Right. I will entertain a motion to. Are we? Well, I'm sorry. Are we took one year, uh, the, the unexpired term of uh, almost the 40. Yeah, yeah, we could do one year. Oh, yeah, to one year. So just, we have yeah. a one year. So just put uh, in. Yep. Yeah. So it'd be for one year and then it'd be up for uh, reappointment the following Action. year. So I make a motion to appoint um, Michael Hennessy to the Board of Health for a one year term uh, to fill the rest of yeah, the days. Say unexpired. unexpired term. Oh, you're having second. a very hard time. Yeah. First from Kelly, second from Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. 
board is zero. Congratulations. Well, you. Welcome, Michael. Thanks, Michael. There's some Meet your board. Your new best friends right here. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. I sent you his application. I, yeah. So you have his contact information. Yeah, okay. I got it. Okay, next up on our agenda, we have Suzanne Walton, Grove Street Issues. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me back. back. So, Dennis, do you want to give an update on some of the findings since yes. she, um, you were last year? Thank you. Um, Lee Rose has reported, and I think Suzanne agreed that the, the digital sign that we put up there worked well. Uh, a permanent solar powered sign would be about $3,500 if we were going to put one up there on Grove Street. Um, the issue is there's solar power. There's a lot of trees up there, so we have to identify a location where we think there's enough sunshine if we were going to go that route. I would suggest more than one in case it doesn't. Uh, get enough sun right. uh, yeah. that's that's really the issue up there is, is uh you know it's a lot of trees so um but we're well, uh, talking about the smaller ones that were at the high school though i know someone had made that suggestion so i don't know i know that yeah. you guys were all looking at that's a bad that's a battery time. powered one so yeah. this okay. would be a solar powered one it's okay. a battery powered one the issue is you have to charge the thing right. routine, yeah. I think. yeah so, so we don't want to be sending somebody up there to, to recharge it. So it'd be more like you see the stop signs in Franklin or some communities that are flashing because they're so low. Or the, the ones on Center Street, of course, are a perfect example. Right. You know, the, the solar power was it. And those have been phenomenal. It wouldn't be quite as the, the same style as that, but it would be, uh, you know, that, so that that's one, uh, you know, one option that I know the board had talked about wanting to see if it would be effective before you agreed to move forward with that. Right, we know that the trailer did having the trailer there did work in terms oh my of gosh, slowing down. Absolutely, my kids were like, "Why, why is that car going by so slow?" <laughs> okay, <laughs> they were doing the speed limit because we used to just flying by, so it was really effective. And then I was like, "Why is everybody going so fast again?" I realized it must have maybe the location it wasn't powering. I don't know. Was that a battery operated or a solar? I don't remember which one was there. Those are, those are battery operated. Also. Yeah, so it must have run out of battery. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, but it was highly effective okay. but i do know i think did i read in the bellingham bulletin oh my life no that's okay right. <laughs> i don't want to let you i know a few knows um that they're going to be putting a street light at uh, the depot hartford uh, uh, if that passes um that that's a that, yeah. that's a proposal um, okay i didn't know how yeah you know. but that is before the planning board it's one of the mitigation items they're talking about with that project that's proposed on Depot Street is signalizing that mm -hmm. intersection. Right. Which obviously I would think you would be in favor of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that would help with the, the speed to run right. through that intersection mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So um, one way or another, whether that's paid for through mitigation or whether that's paid through a grant fund that we're working on, we're going to see that happen. Right. Uh, so what's the timing on that you think roughly? Um, I, like I think one? it depends on which way it's how it's funded right okay yeah. so i couldn't say uh, if it's going to be done um, this year or in a year or two okay so okay. just a couple of questions and i think it's directed to you mm -hmm. um when we put in the signs at high street we consulted the neighbors to determine the right location is the location where it would be proposed to go between two people's property is it how, how was it determined where on that street? We haven't even looked to see where it would go, waiting to see whether or not the board wanted to, to move forward with it and then try to find that. Yeah. We would have yeah, to agree with you. Same. We have to touch yeah. base with the neighbors to make sure yeah. we're not going to have people upset about something good that we're trying to do <laughs> and also find a, a place that gets enough sun uh, to yeah. power that. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. tree laden. Yeah. It is. I think it's, I mean, having driven that location, mm -hmm. I'm sure Lee is in agreement with the speeds, yeah. it's necessary. Yeah. So for the purposes of tonight, Dennis, are you you would need to vote in favor of installing right, you know, one of the digital solar powered signs. And if we can show that it works and there needs to be a second one, I know Suzanne like to see two, mm -hmm. but maybe we try the one and see what happens with the uh how, how the uh the uh depot, hydro depot grove uh, right. signalization of that in section proceeds as well. Okay. All right, so I will entertain a motion. Oops, 35. Yes. That's what Mr. DiMartino was estimating the cost based on ones that uh, they purchased, and that will come out of the uh, the, the highway budget. Okay. Budget. 
motion to install a solid solar sign, I will sign not to exceed four thousand dollars. Second. First from Michael, second from Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 None. All right. So thank you. I appreciate that. So, so maybe between much. that, you know, and seeing yes. how it works with um, the solar power and then you know the potential signalization coming up. I think we should make a That's big awesome. have a big impact. Thank you very much. All right. So there was another issue. I, I don't know if that is, is that an all encompassing you can both of them. Okay. Up, yeah. So I guess I just wanted to start a conversation with you all because I've been in touch with several people within the um, you know the town. I live at 36 Grove and I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but when you come up the road, there's my house, and then you kind of go up another hill and there's the newer where the newer development started just past my house, probably about a half meter up. And um, there's a number 40. So they've been there, I, I would guess, probably, I don't know, and I'm just guessing because I don't have my numbers down, because ultimately what I want to do with you guys tonight is just kind of start a conversation about um, their private gun shooting range that they have in their backyard. Um, I've talked to Chief Daigle, I've talked to Tim, um, and it, it's a hard subject to bring about because you have the Second Amendment right, their rights, and I'm all for guns. I'm all for you know your right to carry um, a weapon. It has become a nuisance in our neighborhood. Um, when they first moved in, there would be you know random shoot shooting and everything, and um, I ended up going up there. I, I knew mm -hmm. these people through a friend of mine. They were their aunt and uncle and. Um, my husband went and saw their shooting range, but it's very alarming. And even just shooting for like an hour in your backyard, it's pretty alarming. So um, basically, you know, after they saw the shooting range, there would be some shooting and it was almost, um, I don't know how to say it politely, like it was like, not like they were playing in the backyard, but like I think the owner has a son that lives there and he's in the military and he would have shooting with his friends out in the backyard. And I know through talking to police, it has been, you know, looked at, it is 500 feet from my home, but I think it's like 501 feet away from our home. We own about five acres and then they own the house up here on top of the hill. So when they go down to their shooting range, it becomes like on our level. So all the noise carries over to the left of the neighborhood and all of our, you know, the neighborhood down that way. So it started off as just light shooting, but then last, what was it, last, a year ago, last September, I had a yard sale and people were like coming in because they were shooting and leaving because they're like, what's going on? You know, there's like a shooting range. <laughs> it sounds like we were. And then last May, they shot for five hours straight. They have, they were licensing people in their backyard to carry a, carry a gun. I guess they have a state trooper there, but they were shooting for literally five hours straight. And it sound like, sounded like we're in the middle of a war zone. There was five to seven people shooting at once. And from what I understand, and we have no laws or regulations in our town to govern this and there's more law bylaws and or laws on like licensing a dog than it is to have a, sh have a shooting range in your backyard so if you have 500 feet you can we can have a shooting range anywhere mm -hmm. so i guess from from my family it's a safety issue because there was another example of the shooting going on where my son had friends over they were playing baseball football and it's during COVID, we're trying to do something outside, right. but everybody had to leave because kids were scared. My dog was freaking out. And you literally cannot talk to somebody even two feet away from them to yell. And that's like right on my back porch. We have to go inside, shut the windows. Okay. So we've, we've been trying to work with our neighbor about, you know, letting us know when he's going to shoot, but he's not. He just does it. And that day when he was shooting for five hours, I had to text him and just say, you know, do you know when you're going to be done? And I mean, he was polite enough to say around and about what time. But whenever we have people over, we have to text them and be like, we've been shooting today because we literally cannot use our backyard. 
So there are, it, it's, it's an oddball kind of thing because I think people, people aren't afraid of the Second Amendment right, but they're afraid of it. Like it's something nobody wants to really get involved in. And it could be a noise ordinance, but it's really not because how are you going to measure it? And I guess I'm looking to you guys to, for just some guidance or help in how to regulate this. Okay. Because I don't think as a community, we want this like popping up in any neighborhood just because you have 500 feet of land. Right. And I'm willing to like do whatever it takes, <clears throat> like do research or whatever to figure this out, but no one seems to have like the answer in town. So likely because we've never, well, I think it, that's the only it's private within his right. right to have it on his own land. So right. it's, you know, I, it's not a being afraid of the second amendment, but it, that is as, as a property owner, it's, mm -hmm. You but know, he his right from dawn till dusk. He could shoot all day long, every day. That's Sunday, he needs to shoot any day. So, so we, we have a noise bylaw in this town, and, yeah. and I know that's weak to say, but if you know, we have a noise bylaw in the town, and this is the first time I've ever heard of it. And my thinking is that we should go out there and we should measure to see if there's uh, at least to start somewhere because I, I agree it's wrong. It's flat out wrong, but they do have the right. And, right. I'm, and I've never, this has never come up as long as I've Don, been around. Don, I don't mean to um, stop you, but we have Chief Daigle on the Zoom too. Oh, okay, yeah, um, I see him, but I hadn't, I hadn't finished. I wasn't finished. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I know I see Chief Daigle there, but I, I, what I'm saying is we, we have a noise by law, at least that's some something we might be able to use, but I am very interested to hear what, what Chief Daigle has to say, um, because I, I just wanted to make sure that I've never seen this, and, and, and I agree with uh, the resident here. That to me, this is just wrong. It's like we have noise bylaw for any business, and if, if I'm hearing you correct, they're allowing gun permitting or something along, I don't know if there's a business going on, if there's an exchange of money, or this is just a favor, but we should really look into this. So, Chief Daigle? Chief? Hold on. Oh, he's gone. You're still muted. Here we go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, this is a real touchy, sensitive issue that uh, when I talked to um, Suzanne about it, I started doing some um, exploring and uh, <clears throat> first person I reached out to was our town council. Um, I then called uh, the attorneys for the Mass Chiefs. And I then called attorney O'Loughlin from Milford who helps us out daily with all our, uh, Lieutenant Ranieri him work hand in hand on all our firearms licensing and uh, issues. Um, this is one of those areas that it's just, there are no, regulations on the books in Massachusetts for firing ranges. Um, there's a section under the Massachusetts firearms laws, which I can copy and give to the members of the board. Um, no, noise pollution in itself is a tough thing to measure in situations like this. Um, like you said, if he's running a business, that's a totally different story. I believe we also have, um, I think uh, building inspector, uh, Timmy Akadi was gonna weigh in, weigh in on this also tonight. Tim's here, but, Chief. Yeah, but what, just to give you a little history of what we've done, we made some contacts. Um, <clears throat> I've spoken to Suzanne, sent her some emails, uh, stuff that I found out. Um, I even watched a trailer. It was about 40 minutes of a select board meeting over in Hoppington. They, they ex experienced the same type of issue. And they were getting ready to bring some kind of an ordinance or bylaw forward if they could. But at the last minute, according to the chief, they changed their mind. Um, there's a lot of issues, private property, there's a lot of issues about, um, you know, the typical firearms laws, 150 feet away from roadways, 500 feet away from dwellings, all that stuff. In situations like this, these places meet those qualifications that we've seen. So it's a tough one. It really is. It is aggravating. I mean, we have a range on the, uh, the uh, recycling center. Um, one thing I was not aware of when the COVID started, but there was a lot of homeschooling going on, which I hadn't given much thought to. So in this case, it was a matter of me working with 
the range itself, not scheduling as many towns coming in or my own guys shooting, trying to work with the neighbors, um, which is something this absolutely comes down to 100%. I mean, this person has to work with his neighbors, and I don't know what we've got for leverage to force him to do that. And Don, uh, back to your point about noise and measurements and stuff, we went through this with the power plants years ago. I remember we used to have these meters, we'd hide, we'd try to take uh, readings of the turbines. But if you talk to our health inspector, and maybe even Timmy can tell you, I don't even know where this equipment would exist today. And I think you need people that are certified in running the machines to come in. And now we'd have to know when they're operating as far as when he's going to be down there shooting to be able to get this set up. So there's a lot of issues in this. And, and I get it. It's annoying. It really is. And um, if he's running a business, that's one thing we'd have to prove. He, he claims he's not. I've sent the safety officer down there. I've sent uh, Sergeant Jones down there who does my firearms work. He does my range work. And they said he's way out there and he's got a half decent setup out there that, uh, you know, you're not worried about bullets traveling and, uh, you know, if you miss a target, you know, traveling, you know, miles or whatever. So this is a real, I, I really, I've been looking to see if there's anything, but I haven't been able to find anything. And talking to town council and two or three other attorneys, I've been told straight out flat, there's no regulations on uh, firing ranges in Massachusetts. And chances are, if we do come up with something, a lot of these places that are in existence might be grandfathered in. That's another issue we might have to deal with. So there's a lot here, and I don't know what the board's pleasure is as far as where to take it from here or what we can do. Tim, didn't you, you actually went and had a conversation with the- Yeah, so um, I had a conversation with your neighbor, Jeff, yeah. you know, regarding whether he was conducting a business there. I yes. informed him that he couldn't do that in yeah. residential zone. He, um, he told me that he was not having a business with their friends, and they have, you know, whatever little competitions they have. But this is the problem. This is why we don't have a zoning regulation. In, and this is why towns all over Massachusetts don't have it. Because the attorney general would never approve that. Because you're infringing on it. So that's why there's no regulation. You know, if you start trying to enforce a, a noise regulation, uh, we've tried, we've done that before. Jim and I have done it for the mulch operation, trying to do that. We borrowed equipment from the uh, TP in Worcester. And um, we did we did some uh, you know we did some recordings ourselves. They poked holes in it. You have to hire a professional. It all has to be um, you know uh, they have to be licensed and everything. So that was that one thing. But if you try to put the noise uh, bylaw on this, mm -hmm. it, it's just not going to happen. You're, right. you're still infringing on their rights. Right. You know, the Second Amendment is very powerful, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's why we don't have <laughs> no towns have regulation because the AG would never approve it. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know who said it, but something was said about a state trooper being there to certify other people. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the owner. Uh, as far as the I, conversation I my husband had with. Well, the, the reason I asked that is because yeah. if you are bringing in an outside entity, yeah. that's a business operation. Well, that's why I said business. If, if they're charging. If they're charging, but I don't think they're charging. But they're pretty wealthy. Um, so how often... Is he doing this on the weekend? Or he's not no, doing we, no winter the time, but it could be any time during the day. And my issue is, so he doesn't properly, like from the back end of his property, this is another issue I have, he doesn't mark it. So anybody could walk into his shooting range. If I walk down my path, I can see his shooting range. I can see all of his targets lined up. And honestly, my kids are scared to death when this happens, because it does sound like there's like, I know I sound kind of silly saying it, but it sounds like there's war going on there. Mm -hmm. It's, so it's like, really it's loud because so it doesn't hit their ears. It hits everybody else's because they're up at the top of the hill and it's just going down. And so the, this doesn't have to be fenced off or anything? No. You just have no. The distances. Isn't distance. there a risk of people walking yeah, unknowingly right. onto someone's yeah. property? Sure there is. Sure there is. I just supposed to be, you're yeah. supposed to be shooting into um, an embankment. That's right. Or right. a, um, you know, approved backing. And that's a case. Right. They so, do have that, okay. but they don't have any sound barrier. Like they're just, it's just wide open. I mean, my experience I, at, the, they, at the high school is yeah. you can hear the police shooting at will during the day. And it does sound like a, a war zone sometimes, but yeah. that's known that it's been there for years. But it's, I think, not to say that that's not anything, but when it's right on top of you, oh. it's so different. And it's, 
like they have so our property is right here they have 12 acres but they're like right here right like literally right on my property line and they could be way down there but they've chosen it's more convenient for them on their private property which like kelly said they should be able to do whatever they want to do but it's not neighborly it's totally overtaking the neighborhoods the neighborhood and i don't know I know, I, I don't even know if there's anything that you guys can do to help ordinances, yeah. bylaws, putting some regulations in for the I town. Think, I think Tim said it, it's, yeah. it, it would be rejected by Can't, the Attorney yeah. General. You never pass anything. But what about, um, you think, did you have an opportunity to talk to the uh, property owner about maybe <clears throat> a certain time? I absolutely did. Yeah. I had a conversation with him several times. Yeah. And I asked him, you know, I asked him if he was uh, training people yeah. for money you know and that's how i got on the business residential part and he said no i said look that's not allowed i said i understand you're doing the you know what you're doing i said but um you can't you can't make it like a business and he and he said right out he said it's not a business and they're friends and and that's what we, we like to do that you go on the weekend i said well i said look i can't i can't tell you you can't do it i said but you know if you could be a little more courteous, you know, when you do it and how you do it, it would be appreciated, you know, and, and he did, you know, he did acknowledge it and, uh, you know, he wasn't abrasive or anything, right. and, you know, so it was really, it's really not. Is there anything like the town of Sharon has signs? I just was there yesterday. That's why I'm mentioning it. Um, that if you're going to shoot, you have to call the police department to tell them you shoot it. Like, is, it, was, is that a bylaw? I, I don't know. I, I just saw it on the side yeah. when I was in Sharon. I saw that something out there. But maybe those are some things we can talk to this gentleman about and see if maybe you could send us an email saying what might make it more tolerable if he shoots between the hours of such and such and such and such. If he does in fact have a you know a, a way of communicating with someone who can if you can give us some of that, maybe we can have a conversation with him and see if. Uh, you know, for the for the good of the community and the neighborhood, he could he could uh, work with us. You know, can can, excuse can, can can we ask him to put um, signs on his property, posted signs on his property, at least you know if people are hiking or, like you said, is there anything we can ask him you know, just to do so that you know there's exposed there's firearms, there's shooting, at least post it. Like they have in Sharon, I, I, it sounds like we don't really have any right. But if we work with him, we might be able to get something back um, from him. That's why I think if, if Suzanne could maybe maybe well, send me I, an email with what might be right, it, uh, well, you know, what's all of it. Yeah, and limiting the the length of time because six hours is five and six hours is a long time. Absolutely, great. Um, I think we are also going to try to reach out to him to try to, you know, remedy remedy it ourselves. But I wanted to start the conversation because I, it's, I mean, I know it's his private property. He can do whatever he wants, but it's just, it's very disruptive. Chief, so. I would liken this to what we have to do with burning permits, where it's between the hours of 10 and 4 and you have to call it in. Because if someone smells smoke in an area, they assume that there's a house fire. If you hear a gunshot, you don't know whether you should call the cops because someone got shot nearby. It seems calling it in would be the. I, oh, I, 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 I'll just add to that, uh, Michael. So years ago, before there was victory and, and others, and right after Dick Hill's property was sold, there was shooting that went on there frequently. And every time there was shooting, I actually called the police and they went down there. And shortly thereafter, it stopped. Now, I don't believe they were on their own property, which is why they were probably there illegal, because at the time, either Fafford owned it or Dick Hill still owned the property. So they were there illegal. So it was easy to move them. But I, I did. I just I called the police every time. It seemed like it happened on Saturday mornings. It was there was some shooting going on down there behind in that in that uh, field. And it wasn't hunting because it wasn't during hunting season. And I, and I think this is a good way to approach it. We, you know, we asked them for some cooperation in terms of notifications, uh, posting a few signs. I mean, I don't think it's asking for the world here. At least maybe it, you know, helps a little bit to get started. I don't think that's that unreasonable to start with. And, and Chief, gun ranges, and, I, and I've been on gun ranges and I, and I, because I've shot in the past. 
I mean, some of these gun ranges are, aren't that far from residential districts, I mean, areas. And I've seen gun ranges, and I know this isn't an official one, but they put large sand barriers like berms around their property to at least hide. So I'm thinking, you know, can we, eh, listen, we can't stop him, but maybe right. if, if he's wealthy, like I heard, I think I heard that uh, said, maybe we ask him to put up some berms, some large sand around, just one for safety, but two, just for sound mitigation. Maybe he'll work with us. Because right. it we doesn't have, sound we like we have a legal leg to stand on to stop him, correct? Right, and, and we did the same thing on our uh, firing range itself. We put some uh, good sized piles of dirt all the way around for buffers and everything else mm -hmm. to try to mitigate mm -hmm. some of the noise. So I think, you know, if somebody comes up with a list of, you know, things that, you know, yeah, I don't know what it'll take, write them a letter or something saying, you know, there's some concerns and here's some issues that we discussed that, you know, we don't think will be that hard to, you know, cooperate with your neighbors with and we're asking for you to take a look at these or something like that maybe we could have town council draft it up or one of us could do it or whatever or i could send a safety officer down to talk to him if that's all you want to do but you know one way or another i think if we make a list of some of these things like you know the signage and the uh, notifying the police station that way when we do get calls we know where it's coming from without tying up a cruiser going down the area checking it out stuff like that i think it's a good idea it's a good starting point all right, so it sounds like we're in agreement that yes. you will put together an email to Dennis mm -hmm. and we'll just at least try to start the conversation, okay. realizing that legally there's not much we can do, but. But isn't this like kind of crazy? Like, yeah. I, I don't know, I just, I find it hard to believe because I was like, do we, I don't know if, we, you know, if there's nothing. Well, it's not that there's nothing. I think yeah. we can I try to see it, what we can do with it. So yeah, the only other thing I can do is move. If, you know, but I'm not going to move from my house that I've been at for almost ten years. Where I right. just moved in, well, pretty much a couple of years ago. But but like the traffic yes. and the speed limit, let's yeah. try this and you know let's try to work together and, and, and see what we can yeah. do. To I appreciate that very much. Help, help okay. you feel a little more comfortable there. Thank you. All right, thank you for your time. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you so we'll much. Be back in I appreciate you. it. All so right. you'll send an email. With, uh, I'll send an email. Do you want me to put you and Dennis sure. on it? Yes. Yep. And then we'll, we'll, we'll all have it. All right, perfect. Yep. Thank you, Dennis. Thank Thanks you, everybody. I yeah. really appreciate it. No worries. Um, all right, we are going in under other business. We're going to do old business first. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do the Taunton Street. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Do you have the other? Oh, I'm sorry. It is different on my. Yeah. Technological update. Oh, All right, sorry. so we're gonna. No, it's okay. I was reading off my sheet from earlier. Oh, yeah, I fixed. I changed it. Um, so, street update. Yes, Tom Street update. So we 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 got good news and, and and not so good news. We we did work with the county, and the county's actually going to come out. Norfolk County Mosquito Control. They are going to come out. Um, hopefully next week. They had indicated that they're going to assess the dams. Um, the woman I spoke with, uh, we've had conversations with, was the same person evidently that was out here 15 years ago or so that you had mentioned uh, when the last time it was removed. So they are going to come out, they're going to take a look. They can go on property that's owner unknown. So I, I think we're, we're going to get some help there. They were, they were uh, very cooperative. Um, <clears throat> previously, we didn't get the same kind of feedback from the county when Mr. Martino had talked to them previously, but I, I can say uh, the woman that I spoke with um, was was preparing herself to with with maps and whatnot, knows the area, and um, is going to come down and, and look to address them. We actually have one other area that we've had some problems with, and they're going to take a look at that as well. So, um, <clears throat> needless to say, it's a problem in a lot of communities. And uh, fortunately, one thing we have is a very good uh, mosquito control district at Norfolk County um, does a great job, and this is part of the service. So uh, that's the good side of. Did they have to like mention what their remediation would be? They'd actually be taking it out, taking 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 the dam. Um, mm -hmm. Looking, they'll come down and assess it. But they did say, for instance, the beaver deceiver that we put in, and that's the trademark name. Um, mm -hmm. She had said th those are great, they're very effective, but all they do is send the beavers somewhere else, you know, downstream, which, you know, may be part of why we're seeing more of a problem where, where you're downstream from the, the well site, right? The water flows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Downstream. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's what I thought. So my, my sense was she talked in terms of what they did last time was <clears> that <throat> they would look to take, dismantle the dam and, um, yeah, like, take, like just take the whole culvert out. Yeah, they'll, they'll have to come in. Um, I, 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 
you know, I can't tell you specifically, okay. but that's not take the culvert out, not knock that that culvert down, no. But look to take the uh, the dams out. I mean, that oh, I see. Okay. But what you did say that they come down, they'd assess it, and they put together a plan. It made it made me made it sound like to me that that they were going to do something and not just come down, take a look at it, and say there's nothing we can do. I mean, I, I got good. the uh, a strong impression they're going to try and uh, help us, but. The issue is obviously she asked uh, one of the things they asked: Are you trapping the the, the beavers? And they said, well, we're not trapping the beavers, but um, you know, obviously that helps. But I got to think there's a lot of beavers out there. You know, I mean, it's not a matter of trapping one or two. It's you yeah. know, it's probably a pretty good population. So my neighbor told me last week that they had actually called the state, and I guess there's a state office, conservation office, yeah. that deals with rehoming and, and removing beavers. And Great. And and did they get any good I don't feedback? I know if they, they, they were working with Barbara on that, or, or who was, I don't re recall the name that she mentioned at the time, um, okay. but she said that that was like actively working on the state side of things. That's great. Because they yeah. were the ones that came back a few years ago. Was it yeah. Well, that would be Norfolk County Mosquito Control, I think, that came down. Yes, in 2012, they so came. I know they had come down once before, no, for county mosquito control. Okay. But if there's another agency that'll trap them and take them away, you know, then you then we're getting it from both ends. Maybe it's the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so that's on that side. Um, we did get some feedback with regard to the stop signs um, from our traffic engineers, and you, you've got a copy of the correspondence that they sent. They strongly. Uh, uh, discourage the use of stop signs for traffic mitigation because they feel that placed in the wrong location, you're supposed to you're supposed to actually do a warrant study, which means you put those rubber tubes down, you see how much traffic there is, and you determine, you know, on a four-way intersection where the traffic will stop. Obviously, these are three-way, and um, essentially what they're saying is that they can be safety issues where, you know, someone's not expecting a a, a stop sign and and uh, you know, somebody knows it's there, they stop and creates a uh, rear end uh, accident. So that, that was the feedback that we got from our traffic engineers uh, with regard to that. But one of the things that we talked about, the safety officer suggested was maybe some a, a solar signage, not unlike what we talked about on Taunton Street, to see if that has some sort of a, a positive effect um, in slowing traffic down. Whether it's one of the ones that flashes with the speed, uh, like Limit, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, we'd ask Lee to take a look at that and see if there isn't something. That was one of the recommendations that we had um, with regard to, the, you know, obviously the best solution would be being able to park a police officer there, but you know, we know we got limitations mm -hmm. with regard to that. Staffing wise, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of just moment. That's a little discouraging that, you know, that one person, you know, with their statistics and their data and based on never probably driving maybe down the road maybe once or i mean we live in the road we, we sit in the front row and we watch it yep. and then we start talking cross streets and four ways and you have that one up on lisa ann that's not right. a cross street yep you have like so you have three so yep. i know numbers kind of don't lie mm -hmm. but when you live there and you see it and i listen in to all the different mm -hmm. you know fights that people come in with the shooting which I'm a gun owner, and I, I think it's more. It's, I think it's more just she doesn't like it. Yeah. It's not annoying, but I'm not. It's not my fight. Yeah. My fight is a speeding thing. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that the quick way of fixing it is the stop signs, and I know they probably will never go up. But the day that a kid gets hit on the bike on that road yeah. is the day that you know. And I'm, this is not a threat. This is the day I come back because I know it's recorded. I know we all know we're all here talking about it. I hope to God. The kid doesn't get hit by it. If you don't put the stop signs up, and you can't, it has an extremely big canopy on that road. There is not a full sun any time of the day. You can't put solar on that road. And I also heard the other person's fight about the on Grove Street or with the with the sign. It won't hold solar. I mean, I know I live in the road. Yeah. It's there's a canopy all the way up and down the road. So where are you going to need to put it? You'll have to put battery. Yeah. You put solar is $3,500, $4,000. And that may slow someone down. They might do a California tap the brakes and keep going. But I mean, if they, I just came down to express what I, I think this is what they should do. 
we all agree on it. I talked to other people that don't even live in that room. They said, you know what, it makes sense. It's three here, why not put three there? And But if they think numbers speak everything, then we cross our fingers. We hope no one either hits a tree, hits a kid, there's a car accident, and we won't have to talk about it again. But I think it's I think it's wrong, honestly. Just my opinion, which maybe doesn't mean anything, but I mean, if it's a 30 mile an hour thick blue cell district, you give someone a five, 10 mile an hour buffer, they're already going 40 on the road that barely holds two cars. But they're not gonna go 40. They're gonna go 45, 50. It's the same speed limit that's on 126. That whole stretch of road is marked at what, 40, 45? How can they go the same speed on that road as they get on the time street? I just don't think they, I, I think that, I mean, I could easily say, while I was doing the data and all this other stuff, and this is what I think, but until you actually see it, live on it, witness it. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've been in fights, arguments. I've had to call up a friend that was a police officer, had him park in my driveway. I mean, I've done everything I can do including come down and say we need three more stop signs just to level it out. You get three here. And I don't I don't think that putting a stop sign is going to cause a possible you know car crash. I mean if you put one at horseshoe, it's a while you can see 126 from horseshoe drive. It's yeah. so straight. I guess what I'm saying is yeah. you know we asked the experts uh, they didn't just come in and say that it's their opinion. Yeah. They they cited think they cited uh, things in the traffic manuals, but ultimately, not to throw it at the board, um, you asked for information, the information was provided, and then, you know, it, it's up to the board. To no, and I, like I said, I mean, saying. if I come here and swing and miss, yeah. it, I can't yeah. get to try, yeah. if like, I get to listen to people's stories, like I, and I drive all these roads, so I, I hear about maybe putting the light at Depot Street in Hartford. If anyone ever driven that road at 4.30 in the afternoon, it's the dumbest thing you could do. It's already backed up from the light, at 140, all the way past the Piedmont. Yeah, so putting a light at Depot Street and Harper Ave, yeah. it's already backed up there. You don't have to put a light. Yeah. The issue is getting across the street. I know yeah. I've done yeah. that also. Yeah. So I mean I get it. So yeah. like I said, it, it just it's that's my thought. I think that's I think that's what we should do. If 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 you're not gonna do it, then then I mean I, I can't make someone do it, but all I can do is hope that no one gets, like I said, I don't want to have to come back saying, you know. I mean, that logic, though, doesn't apply to 126 or Center Street or anywhere else. We don't put stop signs everywhere. So, I mean, no, I understand I what you're I saying, understand. but someone could get hit on any road in town. And oh, had we put a stop doubt. sign to stop them, it may not have changed yeah, that. Without a doubt. I mean, I understand. Like I said, I, I, I've driven Center Street. I, I've served it. High Street. Parker Down. I mean, I drive these. I live in the town. I totally get it. Um, uh, Center Street has sidewalks on both sides of the street. Taunton Street does not. So, is there a possibility that we could do some sort of a battery backed up speed limit just to see, like we, we did with the other streets? Couple days. One on. No, they, if they were going to put a sidewalk in that one, they would do it when they paved it. They decided not to do it for whatever reason. And they paved it, so now you can't yeah, go back. For what it's worth, it. there was plans to do more things there, but it was rejected by the neighbors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Understandable. Um, you know, the, the other things, maybe a flashing caution sign, something like that would get uh, people's attention. Uh, you know, something that flashes yellow. Again, I mean, you hate to do the battery because then someone's, you're depending on someone to go down there and charge it. If you're saying this, is that, I know there's a good canopy there, just like I know there is on, on Road mm -hmm. Street, but it's something that we could take a look at as opposed to just a static, this is how fast you're going. Some, and, you know, some, some people see how fast you're going as a challenge to see how fast I can go, um, not just, you know, that they're, they're exceeding the, the speed limit, but maybe there's an opportunity to put some sort of a, a flashing, um, you know, go slow, or I, I don't know what the different, I know there's a lot of options out there. As yeah, or take down the other two sides that, that, that mean nothing. Yeah. I mean, they're there at Bruce, which yeah. I don't know why there's one there. And there's one at least, and I'm not sure why that one's there. I can get to the, the Taunton, the Weathersfield Mason Taunton, because that's a four way. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the other two. And, I, and so, and I think that's the big problem is they don't want to go through three stop signs every, Hundred feet. Mm -hmm. They can just go left, even if they have to work that way. You to go that way. They don't want to go up that way. Yeah. So it's it's just like I said. I, I 
without me actually videoing it and showing you. And, and like I said, I mean, and I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, but because I have police officers, they're all friends that I know. People don't really write tickets unless it's extremely high or over the speed limit, but they'll write a ticket if someone goes to the stop sign mm -hmm. or a red light. Yeah. It's just that's what they do, and I don't understand why. Yeah. But should we circle back to Don and ask him for some options that are not stop signs but could help? Um, we, like we can certainly do that. You can also get out there and take a look at if anyone hasn't had a chance to get out there. I mean, we've always been talking to you, I think. I mean, you know, we, I, I know it's a tight street. I mean, I take it a lot of times going when I'm going up north end of town and I'm going mm -hmm. on that side. So, and, you know, we, 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 and also we looked at it for some uh, soil work at one point in time. So we, we have uh, spent. Well, it was supposed to, I, fair my understanding of, it. of that whole project was it was, a, of course, I didn't get the whole, mm -hmm. it was a widening. They were going to get all the storm water sidewalks. And then it was whether or not we're going to include sewer. The sewer would go down, but the project was supposedly a go. Yeah, it was just it, it was just an overlay project. Is ultimately what it was, just a, a paving of the a top coat, you know, uh, grind and pave. All right. So, in terms of next steps, um, yeah, yeah we, oh. we, we we can certainly uh, look at options as far as different types of signage that might be. You know, better than than just a, a static uh, or something that that shows the speed there. Um, is there any that. any number of stop signs that might potentially be applied? Is that a possibility, or or is that just a well, shut down uh, possibility? Yeah, if, if 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 we look to get um, if you want the professional opinion, they'll they'll say no. Um, it, you know, it, it creates a. a a traffic hazard. I mean, that's that's the opinion. It's just a matter of, you know, they they're the ultimately, um, you know, going to make decisions for what's in the best interest of, of the whole town. And sometimes when you deliberately do something that somebody that's in the profession is saying that creates a liability or a hazard, you know, potential hazard. You know, that's that's the issue. Not to say they didn't come back and say don't do it, but they said that it's not. It's never recommended for, recommend it, no. for uh, you know, that was without doing a study that was without that was just as you said looking at a map asking you know is this a reasonable thing to do to, to stop uh, is is there some sort of recourse for actually asking for sort of their professional opinion on how to curtail um, speeding traffic Oh yeah, they have a lot of. They, I'll send you the email that uh, they sent us, and they referenced in the manual different types of um, traffic calming <clears throat> methods, things that are used for traffic calming. But oftentimes, one of it is narrowing the street at different points to slow traffic down. It's already a pretty uh, yeah. uh, narrow bad. street. It's it's things like that. Um, uh, putting putting curbing up, but it's. It's it's not really. I can send you the email because they do reference the the uh, you know websites where there's different methodology for uh, traffic calming is what it's called to slow speed down. And they're a Massachusetts organization. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're basically our engineers that you know if you hate the project out in front of this building they designed it so hopefully you don't hate it but. <clears throat> it will be a while before we get to see the fruits of that. And also, they did the uh, design the project from the bus barn to the town center as well. So they, they, they do a lot of, a lot of work. Um, I would be very interested in them. Yeah, I'll definitely, yeah. I'll send it to Hillary and she can send it. Actually, you have it, so you can yeah. send it to them. Yeah. So Michael, it, but... Kelly, Don, any other insight, questions? I think Don's. No, no, I, I'm on mute. No, I, I was just listening, and I and I, I definitely hear the residents and, and feel bad. Dennis and I did talk about this. I have seen other towns do stop signs. There is one that comes to mind, and I knew some people lived on this road, Coffee Street and Medway, very similar, cut through street, and they put stop signs. And honestly, it caused more of a problem than. And I know they were slowing car, trying to slow cars down. But it caused a problem. You get to the point where they got used to it, and it would just be rolling stop sign rolling. So I know it slowed things down, but <clears> it became more of a nuisance. So um, because I, I thought stop signs would be a good alternative too. And in 
doing some research on finding along with Dennis's hearing. I wish there was, we had a better answer, but I really do. And I've been sitting here because I can't join looking at all the maps and thinking where we could strategically put some stop signs and other than Patricia, I, I don't even know if there's a stop sign there um, as Taunton reaches Nason um, right at the end of Patricia. Is there a stop sign there now? Yes, it's a four-way. Yeah, it's a so four-way. So, so there's a stop sign there. I can't tell on the maps here that I'm looking at. So there's a stop sign there. Okay. All right. I don't. I don't have anything else to say. I. I, I feel bad. I, I. I wish I had an answer, but. I, but I don't. Dennis, Unless we can find some other research. What you saw from the when they came back to you with their opinion, if you will. Um, yeah, any of those? Yeah, you've got it there. Yeah. Okay. What are you going to say? Uh, any of the options that they listed speak it's to you? It's difficult or? on a narrow street like like that one. Um, the link, I, the link isn't coming up. Oh, the link's not coming no. up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the email is, but the link in the, the email link, is not okay on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because it's just a copy on yeah. there. Yeah, it's just a scan copy. I guess you know we'll, 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 we won't give up on it. Um, on what we can do out there, we'll try and mm -hmm. uh, take some time to see if there is it because I. I know it's a problem. There's a few streets in town that are a heck of a problem as far as speeding goes. Lake Street's very problematic as well. We have more options there. There's a crosswalk there for the trail on one side to the other, so we can put something there that, that slows things down. And, and, and you know, I, I think maybe we just need to, to work a little harder on it and see if there's something we can come up with. Uh, I can. Uh, I get nervous driving. I know exactly what you're talking well, about. Well, we, we, we've had Hartford Avenue up by uh, St. Blaise Church. We, we had uh, a woman hit and killed crossing yeah. uh, Hartford Avenue. We also recently had a boy crossing the street with his bicycle, and his mother was waiting for him on the other side, knowing when he was coming. And, and she told him, Don't come until I'm there. And sure enough, the car was blinded and took the kid's bike out. Unfortunately, the boy was okay. That was just a few months ago. But we were lucky enough to get some, some grant funds to actually put one of those activated crosswalk signs. So you can press a button and it activates, you know, resident in the in the crosswalk. So we've got something like that. But that's a that's a main drag as opposed to, you know, uh, something like that just wouldn't, you know, work in a, you know, the, you know an area like Taunt Street. But maybe there are other things that we can... Uh, we can uh, explore. Don't give up so, on us yet. Yeah, we, oh. we, we, we figured oh, the beaver thing out, hopefully. We'll keep working on it. Yeah. 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 Right. Could we, um, would there be a good date for a follow up? Maybe we can just check back with you and see if. Yeah, you, you can always, and, and you can always follow up with me. I mean, I, I'll, I'll get that information out. I'll let you know what we're thinking. Um, and, and uh, you know, we won't drop the ball. I know the board wants to. See if there isn't something we can do as well. But if I said two weeks from now, we might be saying yeah, yeah, no, right. nothing. Yeah. But uh, you know, we'll, two months. Might yeah. Be we'll, yeah. Well, let's let's touch as soon as I have an opportunity to see what options are there. It won't be two months. We'll we would just like to kind of yeah. be able to move the chains on the issue. Yep. You know, right. we can't anticipate a, a miracle to, to happen, but at the same time, uh, yeah, it's just worrisome. Yep. <laughs> Jake gets frustrated. Oh, yeah, frustrated. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. After our first meeting, we were right here. I, I we were around talking, and I said, I, I feel good about our conversation. It seemed like everybody kind of, they felt, they, they could see the desperation. Some yeah. people driven down the road. They, they're like, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I come here tonight. I feel deflated. I feel like we still understand yeah. our desperation, but because of one or two professional yeah. Heard someone came up with the data that, <laughs> and I, like so. I mean, I'm not like I said. I'm not yeah. gonna pursue it. I'm gonna let it lie, yeah. um, and I'm gonna hope that something bad doesn't happen, and I don't have to come down and say yeah. I told you so. I can tell you, we, we have some cut throughs in South Bellingham, and uh, I had proposed you can't put speed bumps in, but it, it's just one of those things that again. It, motorcyclist comes down going 40 miles an hour, doesn't see the signs, hit the speed bump. And, um, but, you know, I talked to the board and I said, let's try it. Let's just bolt them in. Uh, we'll make them temporary. We'll be able to take them away in the, you know, let's just give it a shot. And I got, I'll tell you, I got the strongest um, uh, opinion from our town council about that, our town attorney about you are creating a hazard in the road. If you do something like that and somebody gets hurt, 
be putting the town in a very libelous mm -hmm. situation. As much as I, I felt the same way you do, because mm -hmm. if you ever you go down um, Elbow Street, which you're coming down Payne Street, you can take a right onto Elbow and avoid that intersection where the fire uh, mm -hmm. department is. And a lot of people do it. They, they, they speed like heck around there. It's all residential. It's all mm -hmm. kids out playing. And, you know, it was just, you know, I wanted to see if there wasn't something we could do, much like you're describing. And, and uh, you know, I, I told Don we're going to do it. I think I talked to board members about we're going to do it. And then, um, you know, you, you just don't want to, we don't want to do something that's just going to create a situation where somebody can get hurt worse hitting some, you know, coming up to that stop sign like they're supposed to, and somebody's barreling down and wails into them. And knowing that, you know, we had been advised that, you know, it, it, it's it's not a, a suitable approach for what you want to accomplish. And I'll, I'll send you the letter and, it, you know, yeah. it, it I, wasn't. I don't, I'm yeah. not going to tell you. I, mean, yeah. I thank you, but I'm not. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I my overall goal was to just try to get something to slow yeah. them down. Speed bumps were on the question. I knew putting this whole thing in the canopy. You know, and I look and I hear, keep hearing the word safety. Yeah. You know, Lake Street, High Street. Keep hearing safety in town of Bellingham. You know, I mean, speed limit on. Lake Street, it, what's the road that goes down to the crossing trail before Fox Run or Fox, what's that? Center Street. Street. Yeah. Is it center? center? The speed limit's like 45 miles an hour in that road. And they go like 60. Oh, why? Yeah. But 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Did an analysis and that was the speed that was required. I know what they say, yeah. but what they say what's, makes more sense. I mean, they could say one type of highway. Yeah, well, what, it's, what it is, is it's unenforceable. So if, if you're stopped there and an officer writes a citation, yeah. All, all those speed limits, if ever you stopped for speeding, go to whatever district you're in, highway district, every town is it, and ask for the speed limit. Ask for the speed regulation for the street you were stopped on, and they'll say, and if there is none, then it's thickly settled, so it's 30. If there is one, they'll tell you what it is, and if it's incorrectly posted, they throw that right There was concerns on Center Street that if the analysis came through, it that it would pass. increase the speed limit. Yeah. yeah, have we always done that with the analysis? Oh, yeah. It's 80, and, and we've got those, that, yeah, we, we've got those, it's 80% of, the way it works is, it's 80% of the average, so they'll take the average speed, and it's 80% of that, so if, if you're hoping to get to, to 30, um, and the average speed is 45, it's 80% of that, I don't, I don't know if yeah, so with me, but how that's how it works. How long are they doing it for? Like, how right. do they dictate, it, like, this is, that's, how, that, how, that's how it's always been done, and, and the idea is so that you don't set up situations where there's a speed trap. You, you set something that's artificially low so law enforcement can pull people over and, and, and cite them. It used to be real popular on the back roads of Florida where they'd have a speed limit of 60 and then it would drop to like 20, 30 yards later and there'd be a police car there. And, and those are the type, not that it necessarily happened around here, but that's It's also designed idea. so that no one on this board can say, I want the speed in front of my house to be lower. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, I was just wondering how they yeah. how they just determine the speed limit because I, as far as I knew, twenty miles an hour was an illegal speed limit. It's a, it's illegal. Yeah. I thought thirty and up, thirty yeah. was thickly settled. That's yeah. what I always thought. Yeah. As a kid. Yep. Yeah. Somewhere there's, along the line, someone in the town of Bellingham put a speed limit of twenty miles an hour in our road. Yeah. And I don't know how they came with that number. Yeah. Did they just I, say I, I think it's twenty miles an hour. Somebody came into the board and said. You know they're going too fast and somebody agreed to put a sign up there that says 20 miles an hour i can tell you south main street one of the things that we're going to have to do when we do that street over mm -hmm. is take all those speed limit signs down on south main street yeah. because they were put up there by a board 30 years ago that just said you know what? we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna post it that mm -hmm. speed but it's not enforced mm -hmm. i hate to say that on public television with millions of people no, watching but, 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 but that's the point that's one reason why we yeah. don't shoot yeah. radar on that street but yet you do on blackstone street because yeah. the analysis has been done and the schools are there yeah. well, thank you for your we, time yeah, we, thank we, you. We, we'll, we'll stay on it we'll keep you posted as hopefully we come up with something all right, all right thanks for your time thank, thank you. you thank you Main Street. Main Street updates. Turn it back to you again, Dennis. For okay, you, you've got the estimate there. It's about five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to put uh, signals at the intersection of uh, Main and, and Route One Twenty Six. Not to say that we're in a position to, to go forward with it at this point in time, but if it was something that we wanted to do, then um, you know, there's probably a town meeting article I would think for that kind of uh, budget. Um, it's four hundred and. 
uh, bid document prep is likely uh, $50,000. So what, what they're estimating is $475,000. And that's CHA that did the analysis on that. So that's where Cartier's uh, funeral home is. If right. I remember, we had somebody come in. That's and that's that's yeah. no, I, I, mean, I live next to Francis, and we had a discussion about the blinking lights that are there. And he says it goes back to the 60s because multiple people got killed there. Yeah. But it, that makes me, other than flashing stop signs, because it is tough to get out 500,000. That seems, I couldn't believe how much that was. Yeah, I remember what Maple Street, the intersection of Lake and what, Lake and Pulaski was three fifty. It might have been, but that was because remember when they what, did what, Pulaski, they did yeah. all the uh, all underground work. Yep. So we just had a just had to add the three fifty. Yeah, still another yeah. hundred fifty thousand yeah. more. Maybe it's a maybe it's a complete. You know, it would be a complete street scene. I'm trying to think of what it because it, it is brutal trying to come out. I don't, don't come out Main Street. I mean, I'm always going up and down 126, but you see the cars parked right. up there. It is brutal to try and cross it, cross uh, you know that section. I understand right. what they're saying. And I just don't know that we've got. Uh, a, you know, one of the things. I mean. Um, we're going to put it up on uh, up on Hartford Avenue. Let's see how it works. It's a it's an activated crosswalk, so you press the button because the the people that have you know complained about it are mostly are people that are trying to cross their children for yeah. uh, school bus or pickup or right. whatever. But maybe that's an option. It's activated. All it does is is flash you know uh, crosswalk effective. and and uh, that would be a much less expensive fix. Right. You know, that'd be yeah. a twenty or thirty thousand yeah. dollar. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see it as. I mean, there are plenty of streets that are just as difficult to get out of as Main Street. Like uh, trying to get out of Chestnut Street is miserable. Sometimes we're waiting five minutes for a car to let us out. So more street. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't. I but I think if the if the broader issue is people trying to cross there, then that's a different issue. And so yes, try the activated crosswalk sign and see if that helps. I don't, I see as a traffic intersection that it's, there are many intersections that are just as bad as yeah. Man Street. Okay. That's and just my uh, humble opinion. And but. again, what we did with the one on, on Hartford Avenue, we asked our traffic engineers to look at the last thing we, where we want to do is put one there right. and then find out we put it in a place where it puts somebody in more harm. Than, so I think the thing that differs <clears throat> is the optics coming through down Man Street is that you see the road going straight across for the, for the light, not yeah. for the crosswalk. Yeah. But it's very different than that. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so so we'll we'll, we'll look, we'll look at that. We'll have the ask our uh, uh, CHA to take a look at it from the perspective of one of these uh, activated crosswalks, okay. and we'll talk to Lee as well to find out if it is. I, I think it is a fairly active crosswalk, and it's a tough one yeah. because uh, you know. Okay. So the doing the activated crosswalk signal, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. There. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Dennis. So, other business. Riffs? Riffs, yeah, okay, Cindy. <laughs> gifts and grants acceptance. I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the gifts and grants as listed herein with said expenditures to be under the direction of the parties noted. Some good grant money in there. Second. First from Mrs. Grant, second from Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Don, I, sorry. Right? Yeah, okay. I was muted. I'm sorry. I. No worries. Okay, four zero. Great. Vote on the ARPA projects. One project there is the library replacement windows. Yes. Um, and again, it'd be ARPA funds, and it is allowable for that expense. And the ARPA review committee is recommending it to the select board. It's Sweet. twenty twenty five thousand dollars. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right, first from Mrs. Grant, second from Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four zero. Uh, January 24th and February 7th minutes. Motion to approve. Vote. All right, first from Mr. Connor, second. Second from Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None.
Women in Country Club, approval, blah, 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 approval of seasonal restaurant, alcohol, common day, weekend, and Sunday entertainment license. Are they on the call, Hillary, or mm -hmm. we just, okay. No. Again, I'll entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. All right, first for Mrs. Grant, second for Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. none. Comedy Vic license, Bellingham Youth Baseball, April 1st through November 30th. Motion to approve common with license uh, waiting fee. Second. First by Mr. Connor, second by Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. All right. Um, did you all have a chance to review the candidates and incumbents for the annual appointments? Yes. Yes. I did. Um, is there, I know last year we talked about doing them separately, reviewing and then appointing. Did anybody have any? Does anybody have any reservations to appointing any of the folks mentioned? Is that the None here. procedure? Or? Yeah. We only had um, two new applicants this year. Right. And we already appointed one of them. Yep. Michael. Um, Michael. Michael. Michael Hensley, yes. And um, then Jack was the other new one. And we told him if we were going to do it at the meeting, we would get all right. But everyone else is an incumbent. I know Michael had some concerns with the Conservation Commission um, the terms. terms. Yeah, the, yeah, the standard. Right? Yeah. yeah. I also will go on record to conservation. I do. I have no qualms with Cliff Matthews on the committee. I have qualms with him being the chair for the thirty-fifth consecutive year. If we are appointing this board, I think a voice needs to be given to the committee members. And I think that just rolls over. So I do have reservations if that is going to continue. No, is that something we would address in there are no charter or bylaw mm -hmm. um, bylaws on the books mm -hmm. or in the works for um, term limits or chair limits, et cetera. I think it's very effective and it's not written that we do this, but this is be my pull. 13th year year and for 70% of it we have had we've created a progression of now vice chair becomes chair someone steps up and it's a nicer rotation someone coming new onto the board I think has to see two or three years and all indications are and having watched it on tv why do we have so many members on conservation if only two people are doing all the speaking so for that, I will abstain on Conservation Commission. If you want to vote, that's fine. You want to all abstain, as opposed to voting no, because I don't want it to sound like a vote of no confidence. I just have procedural concerns that the other members that we appoint are not speaking up. Just one other uh, matter. Um, I know that you have continued the appointment of uh, Mr. Norton. His last name is Norton, right? Yeah. In, to, uh, in light of the fact that he was in, in Franklin, I believe, just so you're aware of it, I believe Mr. Stanley also uh, lives out of town. Yeah, he lives in Medway. Med Medway, I believe, yeah. just so you're aware of that. Uh, a passport, a passport did, in fact, uh, uh, allow him to continue serving even though he wasn't in town. But I just want to make sure you're aware of that since you've taken And he, has he no, lives in Medway. And he has no intention of moving back into town. Who, Neil Stanley? Uh huh. I don't think. No, that was, he moved out of town, I'm going to say, probably at least two or three times. So ago. Brian Norton moved out of town, but has continued to ask for the continuance because his plan is to move back yeah. in town. That's why yeah. I brought it out, just, just so there's consistency there and you're aware of it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do this tonight, but just, you know, have a discussion. We can do it next meeting or if you guys are ready to make a decision. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to approve the slate of members exclusive of the Conservation Commission. So, and are we hang on? Let's um, wait. So, you're making a motion to approve the um, the list in front of you, um, except for the Conservation Commission. At this moment. At this moment. Can we, before we do that, can we talk about um, capital improvement really quickly? Um, sure. um, so Hillary and I have had some uh, back and forth. Um, we've also had some back and forth with 
um, some members of the bylaw committee, my my assumption was that um, because the bylaws do not specifically state that a member of the Board of Selectmen should be on capital, that the new person coming on would take over my term as an at-large member. Um, some members of the bylaw review committee were adamant that a select board member should be a part of that committee. So what Hillary and I thought was best to do is to still appoint um, Mr. McCarthy as my replacement for one year because I, there's still one year left on the term that I was set for and then I will end up becoming the select board's representative on that. Without a moment, right? I don't, so this is what we need to yeah, the bylaw talk specifically about. specifically says two at-large members right. appointed by the select board and, and three FinCon members appointed by FinCon. Right, and right now there's two FinCon members and right now two at-large members, myself and Roland. So this, will so this is why we wanted to talk to the so why isn't FinCon nominated Mr. McCarthy? Because no, he's not FinCon, on FinCon. FinCon has to nominate FinCon. FinCon. Yeah, this is Capital. Yeah, three right. FinCon members. I don't think Appointed and by FinCon and then two at-large members appointed by Board of Selectmen. And we have reminded FinCon that they need to appoint another member, right? Or can we do that? I, I can do that. I don't, just, I don't just know. Hold we, on capital then. What? Like we can hold on capital. So that's a result. Yeah, I, I, I think the board needs to figure out what they want to do. It's not in the bylaws to have this board. This board we okay. need to how how we want to go aboard that because Michael's correct. If I was the select board representative, then I would not have voting rights on that board unless it's specifically stated in the bylaw, which it's not. Which it's not. No. It's just one of those. Well, it's always been, and it might have been, but you know, we probably but just have had Roland as the um, at the as the at large, and now we have another person. So it, it, I guess, it gives us this opportunity to clean up that specific bylaw and figure out how we. It doesn't make sense if Fincom has three and the select four points too. You think it doesn't or does? It does. Yeah. And then to but. To then make the so, then just to have a select board representative on without a vote. Vote without board. No, no, no. Like I would be the representative, but I wouldn't have a voting right on that like board. So then we need to put it in that. And so why don't we hold off on we those two and we'll include the other ones for now? We'll come back to. Capital Improvement in Conservation Committee Commission, excuse me. All right, so. So, Dennis, did they need comment? to list them all out, or can we just say? No, I can say everybody there with the exception of those two. Okay. It's important because I'm starting to lose my voice and I'm up next. Oh, yeah. So, let, let <laughs> so you're just going to say that. Motion? <laughs> what is um, that? motion to approve the appointments as listed with the exception of Capital and Conservation. Second. First by Mr. Carr, second by Mrs. Grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Closed on. Okay. You, uh, Hillary, can mm -hmm. you come back with a recommendation on conservation that gets the board proportionate? I can. Um, what's the board's opinion on um, Neil Stanley? My opinion is to not reappoint if he doesn't have any. There's a sub, There's already, it's a heavy board and he has no intention of moving back into town that's yeah. that's so, just my personal and so there's a there is a lot of feel about already it. on that board right that need a lot of convincing <laughs> well what does the commission want to do are they obviously are endorsing him correct yes well we yeah, I'm well, we're going to come back to that anyway, right? Yeah, so I'm, for purposes yeah, yeah. of tonight, we're moving. So and I'll ask, to... I'll ask Cliff to attend the next meeting. Okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I'm actually meeting with him tomorrow or Wednesday at the Age. Yeah. 
All right. So I'll come back with recommendation on the terms. Then. And we'll talk further about that the next meeting. Yes. All right. So do you want to talk next because your voice I, I is going or do you want to I'll, I'll, I'll make it through. Um, for some reason, late at night, you know, it's old age. <laughs> you need some tea and honey. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's right. It's almost my bedtime. <laughs> Town administrative appointments as uh, as listed. Um, I think you recognize everyone there. If there's anyone that you don't recognize, let me know. But I never heard of Hillary. Who's she? <laughs> Hillary does a phenomenal job. I thank her all the time for keeping me on track. Thank you. I will just point out that we have four assistant inspectors listed here and. Or the Board of Health. I don't know why we went through that exercise team. Yeah, there are, they, they do have some, uh, but you're, you're right. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, they do have assistance. Why that, do they not want to do that? That vote is fastest. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions or concerns for Dennis's appointments? None. Entertain a motion. None of these have requirements of residency. No. Make a motion to accept Dennis Dennis Frain Town Administrator's appointments. Second. First from Don. Second from Michael. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. None. All right. What else you got, Dennis? I think you've got it all. On my report, Man Street, Town Street, and. Uh, <clears throat> in the issue with the with the board of health, the summary on the board of health. So Perfect. we've covered it all. all right, so I have some that. signatures, but we can do it. <clears throat> anything that we skipped over new business? Anybody have anything under new business? All right. Um, I'll entertain. I don't know if this applies to old business. Is the Steve that's on the screen Steve Gentile? I guess not. Um, Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hey, Steve. Uh, without having the previous reports, would you say that the fire department activity report for February was indicative of your mutual aid calls, or unusual? Because in your budget, it appeared that you were concerned about the swings that we were calling a lot of towns in, and and the swing is marginal. Yeah, it was um, unusually unusually quiet for February. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, is that Mary McKinnon? It is. Yes. Mary, do you have your hand raised? No, that's no, just no I think it's the mouse. Yeah. Oh, okay. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like you had your hand raised. Sorry. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have to do Roger Street? Oh, uh, no, we're, no, that's, that's going to be, be at um, March okay. yep. With somebody, somebody, Thank you. First from Mrs. Grant, do I have a second to adjourn? Second. Second from Michael. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Feel better, Don. Thank you. I'm a little grouchy, as you can tell. Bye. <laughs>